In the last lecture, we explored the technology, statutory law, and constitutional status of historical cell phone location records. This lecture briefly rounds out the topic with a discussion of prospective cell phone tracking. Since the technology and the constitutional questions are very similar for historical and prospective data, I won't say more about those. Instead, I'm going to focus on just two statutory issues associated with prospective cell phone tracking. Both relate to how prospective tracking fits into ECBA. The first issue is the so-called hybrid order. It's a creative attempt to shoot the gap between a pen trap order and a wiretap order. The second issue is just briefly revisiting the status of tracking devices under ECBA. So, let's start with hybrid orders. As I hope you recall, ECBA sets up three categories of prospective communications information. The first is dialing, routing, addressing, and signaling information, or DRAS. That category can be acquired with a pen trap order. The second category is just communications content. That category requires a wiretap order. And the third consists of information that is not content and is also not DRAS. We haven't seen anything in this category yet. Now, clearly prospective cell phone location isn't the content of communications. So that's one category down. You might be thinking that cell location is signaling information covered by DRAS, since it's a necessary signal for the operation of a cell phone. Almost all the courts that have considered this issue have held as much. However, because of another statute, which I'll get to in a moment, prospective tracking can't be covered by the ordinary DRAS rules. So, with the ordinary DRAS and content categories knocked out, that puts prospective cell phone tracking into the mysterious third category. Let me explain why the ordinary pen trap provisions can't apply. The Communications Assistance to Law Enforcement Act, or CALEA, has a provision that directly addresses this issue. We're going to discuss CALEA further in the next part of the course. The provision reads, with a little editing, that information acquired solely pursuant to the authority for pen traps shall not disclose the physical location of a subscriber. That's why a pen trap order just isn't enough. There's widespread agreement on that point. And there's also widespread agreement that CALEA requires more than mere relevance to track a cell phone. Where there isn't agreement is the proper alternative to a pen trap order based on relevance. One option, understandably favored by law enforcement agencies, is to fashion a new intermediate order. Recall that there is a hierarchy of three basic substantive standards. The lowest standard is relevance. Then comes reasonable articulable suspicion, and then probable cause. In the context of retrospective surveillance orders, those standards map to a subpoena, then a D order, and then a warrant. Over on the prospective side, we've seen how a pen trap maps to the relevance standard. And we've seen how a wiretap order relies on the probable cause standard, plus some extra requirements. So there's something of a donut hole. ECPA does not explicitly provide an intermediate prospective surveillance order. The Department of Justice response, cleverly, was to make an intermediate order. DOJ's view is that it can combine a pen trap order with a D order. That's called a hybrid order. The idea is that a hybrid order has the prospective characteristics of a pen trap order and the reasonable articulable suspicion standard of a D order. So, that's how DOJ proposes to fill the ECPA donut hole. Unsurprisingly, this approach of mixing and matching from parts of ECPA has drawn substantial criticism. Let me quickly run through some of the common arguments for and against these hybrid orders. On the favorable side, the argument goes something like this. Prospective cell location 
is signaling information. That means it's covered by the Pen Register Act. And the Pen Register Act has an exclusivity provision, saying signaling information can be collected only with a pen trap order. So there does have to be a pen trap order involved somehow. As for Clea's solely pursuant to a pen trap language, that means something can be added to a pen trap to get location information. And the primary issue that Kalia was addressing was setting a standard higher than relevance, which is what a pen trap uses. When historical cell location information is collected, it's covered by a D order. That makes a D order a natural choice for combining with a pen trap order. And a D order, recall, uses the reasonable articulable suspicion standard. So, by combining a pen trap order with a D order, investigators solve the Pen Register Act exclusivity issue. There is a pen trap order involved. They also solve the Kalia standard issue. There's more than relevance required. So, that's the basic argument on the for side. Now, here's the argument in the against column. D orders are part of the Stored Communications Act. They're about information that already exists, not prospective interception of information. The entire structure of ECPA distinguishes between retrospective and prospective surveillance. Also, it's just not possible to mix and match parts of a statutory scheme to create a super statute. That's certainly not an ordinary approach to interpreting law. Another objection is that there isn't any relevant cross-referencing between the Stored Communications Act and the Pen Register Act. As we've seen, ECPA is an incredibly intricate statute with lots of moving parts. If Congress intended to create some new type of surveillance order, surely it would have said so much more clearly. As for Kalia, it's entirely consistent with a warrant requirement. If the issue is that the pen trap relevance standard is too low, well, probable cause is certainly higher. Moreover, the legislative history on Kalia, and in particular some testimony from the director of the FBI, suggests nothing about creating a new type of surveillance order, and in fact, the testimony emphasizes a sharp distinction between retrospective and prospective surveillance. Finally, there are other ways to vindicate the Pen Register Act's exclusivity provisions. For example, it's pretty easy to conclude that if law enforcement gets a warrant, that satisfies the Pen Register Act, since a warrant is more demanding than a pen trap order. Or, alternatively, that CLIA accepts phone location from the Pen Register Act's exclusivity provisions. So, there's a run-through of some of the common arguments. The majority view in the courts, by about two to one, is that hybrid orders don't work. They reject the mix-and-match approach. Consequently, the majority view in the courts is that as a purely statutory matter, prospective cell phone location tracking requires a warrant. I've pulled together a data set of federal magistrate and district court opinions on hybrid orders. At the time of recording, no court of appeals has ruled on whether hybrid orders are viable. As you can see, the federal courts wrestled with hybrid orders through the latter half of the 2000s. This figure separates the opinions into those allowing and those rejecting hybrid orders. Again, most courts that have looked at this issue have rejected the DOJ's hybrid order theory and require a warrant for prospective cell tracking. About a third of courts, however, do entertain hybrid orders. All right, that's all I wanted to say about hybrid orders. Now just a quick note about tracking devices. In the context of historical phone location, we saw a minority view that a phone constitutes a, quote, tracking device, unquote, under ECBA. Under that view, the ordinary ECBA procedures don't apply, and instead, a warrant is required for phone location. There's substantial debate about whether the tracking device provisions relate to just physical tracking gadgets, 
or whether they cover cell phone location too. In the context of prospective tracking, courts have been more receptive to the tracking device argument. They've also been quicker to sidestep the issue, since once a court has rejected hybrid orders, it's already going to require warrants. All right, that's all I wanted to say about tracking devices. I've updated the table of prospective surveillance orders under ECPA. In this minority view, the hybrid order is available as an intermediate step. And in this majority view, a warrant is the proper intermediate prospective surveillance order. Note that just because a warrant is required doesn't mean there's Fourth Amendment protection or a suppression remedy. Quite a few courts conclude that a warrant is required solely as a matter of statutory interpretation. In the next lecture, we're done with cell phone location. We're going to look at the law that regulates government hacking.